you are arguably the greatest defensive fighter of all time. No, you, I'm the best fighter ever. Not just defense. Considering that. We're going to go to the stats. And we're going we're gonna to talk about Mayweather. And we're going to talk about other legendary fighters. Okay. Okay. No fighter in history has landed on a higher percentage than Floyd Mayweather. In terms of compu box tallies? Exactly. I took less punishment than any fighter in history. No fighter in history has beat more champions than I beat. They don't want to give me the props that I deserve because everyone else, they had a tough time. You know, all these other fighters had a tough time. I didn't have to have no tough time. I'm not that good, I'm that great that I made it look so easy. I'm just a special artist that paints a beautiful picture. See the passion in his eyes. That was Floyd Mayweather sitting down with our Joe Tessitore, always on the defense, both literally and figuratively, Skip. Mm. Were you surprised by those comments and that passion there? Stephen A. Smith, I wasn't surprised. It did strike me that these comments from your man Floyd Mayweather Jr. were extremely revealing because here he is at this age and station in life and in his career and he still feels compelled to try to convince us just how great he really is because in my opinion Floyd isn't convinced how great he really is. So here's this man, he's 38 years of age, he's fought professionally for 20 years. 48 men have tried, as you always remind me, and 48 have failed. And here, number 49 comes on Saturday night, and Floyd continues to insist, this is the end, this is it for him. Yet he's still trying to say that, we didn't hear the rest of the, this part of the soundbite, but he's saying, well, this fighter does this well, and this fighter does that well, but I do everything great. He even went so far in remarks to you, Stephen A., recently in Las Vegas, did Floyd, to disparage the great Muhammad Ali. I should say the greatest Muhammad Ali, to discount his rope-a-doping of George Foreman, all in the vein of trying to say, look, I'm even better than Ali was. But in the end, did Muhammad Ali have to tell us why he was the greatest? No, he just knew he was the greatest, and we knew he was the greatest, so he didn't have to keep beating us over the head with that. So here's a Floyd who knows full well his greatness is flawed. I always say he's the greatest defensive fighter. I don't know how you could argue that. Joe Testor said that in his opening statement that we heard there on the, the tape. And Floyd jumped all over it and said, no, I'm the greatest fighter, not just the greatest defensive fighter. But clearly, Floyd doesn't have great punching power. I bring it up all the time on the show because it's so painfully obvious to me, and I think painfully obvious to those 48 who tried and failed, that if we want to go pure knockout, I'm talking about knocking a man out cold, the way Marquez knocked out my man Manny, not technical knockouts, not the sucker punch knockout of Victor Ortiz. If we want to go back to Floyd's last knockout, unqualified knockout, I have to go to May 22nd, 1999. 1999. Nine. Somebody named Justin Juco, J U U K O, Justin Juco, that's his last pure knockout victim by Floyd Mayweather Jr. So he has to keep trying to convince us he's the greatest ever when. All he's ever done is be the greatest defensive fighter. And it's hard for me to watch him because he runs too much and he doesn't inflict enough offensive damage on all those 48 opponents of his. So I get it that he lands a lot of punches, but he doesn't take his pound of flesh very often. They don't have that much impact. So I think deep down, Floyd's insecure about it. All the way to age 38 to his final fight, He's trying to go over the top to convince us he's the greatest ever, when we all know he's not. Sorry, Floyd. Well, let's be clear about something here. We all know we can't trust you to be objective about Floyd Money Mayweather because you know you you know you think he's chicken Mayweather and you've been disrespecting him for years despite his unblemished excellence in the ring. Having said all of that, let's be very, very clear about something. When you use the word insecure, it is clear you don't know. Floyd Money Mayweather because the last I, I thing I he do. is that the last thing he is is insecure as he breaks this down let's make sure we understand what's coming along here first of all 
He did beat Ricky Hatton. That was a Ricky Hatton. That was a TKO as opposed to a KO. I understand that. When he was moving up in weight, you got to remember, he started at the lightweight. When he was fighting a Diego Corrales, Diego Corrales was a knockout artist. Floyd steps in the ring with him, knocks him down six or seven different times, mm -hmm. had the boy crying in the ring, God rest his soul, because he ultimately ago. passed away yep. in the car. I understand that. A lot of it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But he beat an Oscar De La Hoya. He beat a Sugar Shane Mosley. He beat all. He beat a Canelo Alvarez. He was young. He beat a, a, a Miguel Cotto. He beat, you know, he beat a whole bunch of guys. What I'm saying to you is this. Do I believe he's the best in the world ever, rather? No, I do not. He and I have debated about this for years. He and I go back and forth, and it was nice to see him talking to Joe the way that he talks to Joe because that's how he argues with me about it practically every time we see one another. He firmly believes he's the best because he believes we all don't know boxing. And compared to him, Skip, he's, he's allowed to make that argument because when you're considered one of the best ever, and I don't think there's any question that he's one of the best ever, then you have a right to question other people's intelligence about the sport you have mastered as a, as a pugilist. So I don't, I'm not offended by that. But here's where it comes from. Floyd's belief is that the rest of us are cut up, or caught up rather, in the guts and glory, the Arturo Gaddis versus the Mickey Wards of the world, you know, the Rocky Barboa fictional character and stuff like that. Floyd believes we're caught up in that. When Floyd brings up Muhammad Ali, he brings up the rope of dope. He doesn't bring up the way Ali annihilated so many other opponents prior to Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle or even prior to Frazier. He doesn't bring up that stuff. He's caught up in the rope of dope. When he thinks about a guy like Marvin Hagler, he thinks about Marvin Hagler knocking Hearns out, but the punches Marvin Hagler took in the first round as well. He thinks about all of those things. So Floyd is the kind of guy who believes this ain't the UFC, this is boxing. The objective is to hit and don't get hit. And who does that better than me? That's what he thinks. That is why he believes he's the best. That is why he brought up the fact that comp your box numbers strongly favor him, the number of champions that he's beaten, the way that y'all project that somebody's going to walk into the ring and annihilate him and they can't touch him. And he brought up a point that I have made to you, Skip Bayless, personally on many, many occasions. Our Manny Pacquiao is a huge example. Rotator cuff and all. Everyone knows what Floyd's going to do. The reason why the fights have been mega is because at one time after another, we always presume that this next fighter is going to go after Floyd and he's going to be able to take him out. And Floyd continuously makes them look less than ordinary because he's so much of a defensive genius in the ring. That's the argument that he's making. He's saying Y'all were supposed to come. Y'all had one dude after another after another who was supposed to take me out. And every time they can't, y'all have an excuse. Just give it to me. I'm not giving them the best ever, no matter what. But he is one of the best ever. And he's clearly, clearly the class of boxing over the last several years. Nobody else is even close. Okay, I hear you. But here's why I call Floyd insecure. Again, when you're 38 years of age and you're 48 and zero, and you speak the way we just heard him speak, trying to convince us again and again and again why I am greater than you think I am, you are very insecure about the way you're being perceived by the world. And the, the world doesn't believe that Floyd is the greatest. Even you, a, a friend of his, a guy who loves Floyd, J just as a fighter, you're a the fan of his. Right. I, right. I get that. I, I respect that. But but even you are saying, no, it's Ali. I mean, would you would you give Floyd the edge over Sugar Ray Leonard? Because I wouldn't. I'm sorry. No, because... no, no, no. But what I'm saying to you, Skip, is this: I do understand and appreciate why he feels that way. This is a guy that sat down with me and tried to convince me that he has been through more racism. Than Muhammad Ali. He actually said that. 
He, be he believes this, Skip. And so what happens is, is that when you have somebody, of course I disagree with that. Of course that doesn't make any damn sense to me. But the flip side to it is that as somebody who has been fighting since he was two years old, that has put himself through what he has put himself through to be the greatest ever in his mind and one of the greatest ever unquestionably, when you go through all of that, you are going to be a bit sensitive to people that try to deny you what you believe you have firmly earned. That's not insecurity. That's you believing, yo, I earned this. I'm not going to let you take this away from me. And I'm telling you, most of us could appreciate that. Most of us can. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, everybody, meaning anybody. Okay, final quick point, and, and I'm going to make a positive point about Floyd here. In a separate interview yesterday, he actually said something positive about my guy Manny Pacquiao. Who knew? He called Manny a, quote, hell of a fighter. I, I think maybe he did that to set up a potential Pacquiao Mayweather, too. I like so, it. Yeah, I do, too. If, if, I, that, if, Pacquiao, if Pacquiao gets on his knees... And yeah. apologize yeah, right. for sitting there that and trying happening. to and trying to wipe away Floyd's legitimate victory over him on May second. Perhaps Floyd will be kind Le enough. Le legitimate to consider victory a over a one arm okay. fighter who the needed rotator cuff surgery he, the he next needs, day. Listen, the next listen, day he's in the hospital. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Oh, we, we don't, don't want to hear yeah. that. Sweep we don't that under that. the carpet. Oh yeah. no, no! I'm not saying his rotator cuff wasn't injured. We just, we just questioned when it happened. Oh, I believe it happened from all those missed punches. Yeah, that's what I believe fighter. happened. That's Manny what I believe will happened. be healthy, and if Floyd gives him a, a second chance, please, Floyd, I'm on my knees begging you, please, please, Why? please. I would Manny much will win see, the second fight. I would much, a healthy I Manny. Would much rather, I thought an unhealthy Manny beat Floyd. I would, I would much rather see Money Mayweather against the winner of Canelo Alvarez versus Miguel Cotto. Yeah, you would. You might be the only I'm man in the world. Well, we I will mean, see please. Mayweather this Saturday when he fights Andre Berto, who's 3-3 three and three in his last six fights. Well, a few if, people will. <laughs> right, a charity ahead, fight. Yeah. If he wins, yeah. he'll tie former heavyweight Rocky Marciano's record of 49 wins, zero losses, zero draws, and that was set back in 1955. Coming up, by now, you've probably seen that